my dad and I were just trying to make cookies. And this happened. I was just trying to cook up an answer for Audrey. Why does heat cook food? It's pretty amazing if you think about it. If you add flour, eggs, sugar, butter, and some other stuff, and you put a little heat in it, you get this. But if you heat it a little bit too much, you get this. How does heat do that? Maybe your questions about hot stuff will help me answer. Blech. Yeah, this is definitely burnt. Speaking of which, here's a burning question. Why does some stuff melt and some stuff just burn when you heat it? Well, Tristan, to answer that, Snow's all about hot, so ready or not. Here's my special guest, Shakib Rahman. Hey, Zoe. Hey. I'm all fired up to be here to help you answer some questions about why some things melt and other things burn. Is that why you brought the biggest chocolate bar ever? Are we going to eat it? Please tell me we're going to eat it. Oh, we're definitely going to heat it. Wait, did he say eat or heat? Ice water. I thought we were supposed to be making stuff hot. Well, when we're talking about hot stuff, it's important to remember that heat flows from something that's hot to something that's cold. Like this pitcher of ice water. Oh, I get it. Heat flows from something hot like my hand to something cold like this ice water. Yeah. <sighs> Let's eat. I mean, eat the chocolate. <laughs> Do you see what's happening, Zoe? Yeah, it's melting. Yeah, it's slowly starting to become a liquid. Why? It's because the energy from the water is getting transferred into the chocolate. Just like when you put your hand on the cold pitcher of water, the heat from your hand went into the ice water. Here, the heat from the water is going into the chocolate. Cool. I mean, hot. Exactly. Oh, it's melted. Does everything melt at the same temperature? That's a great question. But everything doesn't really melt at the same temperature. The chocolate has melted, but the glass bowl that it's in is still a solid. Same thing with the spoon that I've got in my hand here. That's still a solid as well. Anything will melt if you heat it enough? Well, here's where it gets weird. Some things don't really melt when you heat them. They just burn. I've got a little wooden splint here. <gasps> Fire! Exactly. Some things will burn, and this is called a combustion reaction, when it burns instead of melting. By the way, don't try this at home. Some substances will do both. Cheese is a good example of this. First it'll melt, and then it will... Burn. And sometimes, it feels like we're the one melting and burning. Neve had a question about that. When it's sunny outside, why does the sand burn your feet? want to play in my bare feet, in my bare feet. But oh my gosh, the sand is hot. I can't stand still, it hurts a lot. It's the sun's heat, it's burning my feet. The sun has heated up the sand, and now it's more than I can stand. It's heating my feet, it's heating my feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Hot! Ow! Beach sand can get really hot. But if you keep heating sand all the way up to 1,700 Celsius, hotter than lava, something amazing happens. It melts and turns into a thick liquid, like taffy. And when it cools down again, it hardens and becomes glass. But he can also be used for destruction. Camu, we have the same question. How does heat make something explode? Yeah, how come stuff blows up sometimes when you heat it? Shakib did a cool experiment with Jenna and Marco. <laughs> the experiment! Hey, Zoe. We're out here trying to do our first experiment. Do you guys know how to make an explosion? Yeah, take some fuel and light it, and it'll cause fire to make the explosion. That's perfect! You guys know any examples of fuel that we could use? 
Like gasoline? Yeah, gasoline is a great fuel. It's actually a fuel that we use when we're creating explosions every day. Out here in the parking lot, we're surrounded by things that actually cause explosions all the time. The engine of your car has something called an internal combustion engine. And those cars cause explosions, and that explosion can do work for us. We're going to do the same thing here. Now remember kids, this is a very dangerous experiment. Please do not try this at home unless you are supervised by a professional like me. What we're going to do is take this tennis ball and launch it out of this cannon. I need you guys to take three large steps backwards. Good, now what I'll do is add the fuel in. The next thing we need to do is put the tennis ball inside our cannon. Once we ignite the fuel inside the cannon, it's going to force the tennis ball to come out the end and hit that target over there. Three, Three two, two, one. Oh, that was amazing. That was so cool. We use explosions for big stuff, like demolishing buildings or blasting tunnels. But if you can control explosions so only a little energy is released at a time, you can use them to make things move. Shakib has another experiment. It's called Gummy Bear Meltdown. Shakib, take it away. First, take the special chemical that I've prepared and very carefully pour it into my test tube. The next thing I need to do is add some heat. And for that, I use a propane torch. This is very dangerous, so don't try these experiments at home. Once it's all melted, we can add in our last ingredient. Any last words, my fine gummy friend? Wow. Who knew gummy bears were explosive? I'm glad they don't explode inside of me. Well, they kind of do, actually. What? What happens is the energy from the gummy bear gets broken down in your body, specifically in your stomach. From there, that energy, all of the sugar in our gummy bears, gets used up to power your muscles and your body to help it move around. Speaking of gummy bears, I got a sweet question from Amanda. When you heat sugar, how does it turn into candy? To find the answer, I went to meet candy maker Ling Geng. He makes special hard candies by hand, and they have little images and messages inside. There's little panda bears inside. How do you do that? It's all about controlling heat. Come on, I'll show you. Today, we're going to make some special candies that has your show logo in it. Oh, the magnifying glass of my show. <laughs> awesome. First, we have to mix the ingredients for the candy. Take the water, pour it into the pot. Now, pour these two bowls of sugar. <laughs> That's a lot of sugar. No, the sugar glucose. Hmm, it's really goopy. Now we have to heat the ingredients. The mixture has to reach a very specific temperature just right to make the perfect candy. What temperature is just right? I can't tell you the exact temperature because that's the secret recipe. Oh, please? No. Come on, tell me. Uh-uh. Tell me the secret. Come on. Can't tell you. I won't tell anyone. Sorry. Oh, come on, just tell me. It's a secret. But I can show you a test we do that tells you whether the sugar is ready. OK, that works. We drop the mixture into cold water to see what it does. So now you can try to touch the sugar to feel its texture. Oh, it's really soft. This is called the softball stage. When it's soft like that, it's not hot enough for what we need. So we had to put it back on heating. After a few more minutes of boiling the sugar solution, let's see what we get. Oh, hey, it's hard. Yeah, this is the hard crack stage. You see how it bends and breaks? This is perfect for what we need. That's amazing. Just a little change in the temperature made the sugar way different. Now we can make our little candies with it. Cool. First, it's time to add color. The red sugar will be the handle of the magnifying glass. And the orange is going to be the circle around the glass. And this is the white background. 
We're gonna turn this pile of yellowish goo into a snow white color by stretching it on the hook. This process adds air into the candy. That's hard work. Pull, 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 pull. Yes. Is it's it hot? It's hard to pull it. Yeah. Now it's cooling off faster and faster. See how white it turned out? Yeah. Now that all the candy stuff is made, it's time to put the pieces together. Lin Jen uses a special heated tabletop to keep the candy soft enough to work with. Wow, so much depends on everything being exactly the right temperature. Exactly. That way we can control the shape. The heat is our friend. <laughs> this is where Lin Jen does his magic. He puts together all the pieces that make up my show logo, then wraps them all up in white and orange candy. Look at that. By using heat, Lin Jen is able to take a huge candy chunk and make it thinner and thinner. Amazing. Mm, those are so good. Thanks for showing me how heat can make sugar. So much fun and delicious. You're welcome. This next super hot question is from Maya. Why is it getting warmer in the Arctic? It turns out heat doesn't just make stuff explode, melt, and expand. It can change something much, much bigger. Bigger than my house. Bigger than my town. Bigger than a whole continent. Bigger than the entire planet. Good God, I'll make my head explode. Ah! My next guest knows all about it. Thomas Ribeiro won first prize at a national science fair with a project to make electricity while getting rid of something called greenhouse gases. So what are greenhouse gases? Well, greenhouse gases are gases that can be found in the atmosphere, and they could be produced both naturally or by human activities. Thomas tells me that when we burn fossil fuels like oil and gas for energy, greenhouse gases are released into the air. Garbage dumps and burping cows make even more of them. Because they float high up in the atmosphere and trap the sun's heat around the Earth like a warm blanket, Greenhouse gases are changing our planet, causing floods, fires, and weird weather. Phew! How do the gases trap the heat? Let me show you. These jars actually represent the Earth. Let's pour some water in both of the containers, seal them up, and zip a plastic bag around one of them shut. This plastic bag is representative of the greenhouse gases that surround our planet in the atmosphere. Now, we place it under a sunny place or bright light for about two hours. So, now we wait. Now that two hours have passed, let's take the temperature of the water in both the jars. Whoa, it's warm. Right, the plastic bag trapped the heat as the water was warming up. And the second jar represents the Earth without such a great quantity of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Let's measure the difference of temperature. Forty-four point three degrees Celsius. And what about the second one? Forty-six degrees Celsius. That's a two degrees Celsius difference. That's a small difference. Right, but a small difference can make a huge impact on our planet. And that, Maya, is why the ice is melting in the Arctic. Thanks for telling us all about it. No problem. Speaking of hot stuff, where does fire come from? The Flat Earth Corner! Beware! Search ruler of fire giants. Scorch or men and earth is coming to set the entire world on fire. He will wield his massive flaming sword, and no one will be spared. No one! So get yourself a fireproof vest and a rowboat and run for your life! We're all gonna die! <laughs> Pretty much every ancient culture from the Vikings to the Egyptians believed in some kind of fire god. 
or goddess. But now we know a lot more about fire and where it comes from. So I think I found the answer to your question. In nature, fires start from lightning or from hot lava spewing from volcanoes. We humans can make fire with a match or lighter, by banging special rocks together, by mixing chemicals to cause an explosion, and sparking something with electricity. Noah has a question about another way to make heat. Why do hands get warm when you rub them together? Oh yeah, friction. Ow! Friction happens when one object rubs against another. They heat up. That gives me an idea for... My Great Challenge! Veronica and Kiana, your team sleeve. Chloe and Daniela, your team took. Yeah! <laughs> Today we're heating things up with friction. Shakib over here has a thermal camera, which can actually see heat. Cool! I think they mean hot. But your first challenge is you have 10 seconds to make as much heat as you can by rubbing your hands together. Kiana, you will start first. 10, nine. Shakib will measure the heat that your hands transfer to this board. Five. Push harder! Four. Three, two, one. 26.2. Pretty good. Okay, Chloe, your turn. 10, nine, eight, Another. seven, six, Push em. five, four, <laughs> three, Faster. two, one. Put Go. your hands down. Thirty point seven. Okay, Chloe, you win. Yeah! One point for Team Two. Ten. Second nine, challenge: rubbing seven, sandpaper seven, on wood. Seven, six, five, Push harder. four, three, two, one. Forty-one. Wow, Daniela, your turn. Ten, nine, eight, Faster. seven. Come Six, on, push harder. Five. Look at four, that. In only 10 three, seconds, the piece of wood's room temperature one, is rising from 20 degrees to... 41 also. So I guess both of you get a point. Yeah! yeah. 10, 9, Third and eight, final challenge. Seven, a pedal to the metal six, friction challenge. Friction nine, makes so much heat eight, that it can make a race car's seven, tire melt right six, off. That's why cars five, need to put new ones on during four, a race. Three... Two, one. 27.7. Pretty good. Okay, Danielle, your turn. 10, nine, go, 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 go. eight, seven, faster, faster. six. It's two to one. Faster. Will it be a tie Four. or will team two Three. win? They need to beat 27.7 degrees. 28.2. That means team two, you win the challenge. Yeah! Thanks, everybody, for being on my show and helping me find stuff out about heat. Yeah, yeah that was hot. That's hot. Wow. Why do we eat hot food? Good question. Why do we eat hot food? I found out that in prehistoric times, we humans ate our food raw until we figured out how to cook it over a fire. Uh -huh. Oh! Uh-oh. Eating food actually changes it, so it's easier to chew and swallow. Look how different the meat is before and after it's cooked. Cooking food also kills germs called bacteria, which makes it safe to eat. And some foods like chicken should never be eaten raw because it has bacteria that can make you really sick. Ugh, I would never, ever eat a raw chicken. Hey guys, what food do you think tastes better cooked than raw? I think carrots and potatoes and meat. Meatballs. I like cake better when it's cooked. Noodles. Fish. Cookie dough because when it's like raw, it doesn't really taste good and if you eat it raw, it like hurts your stomach. I love frozen pizza, it's the best. So I found out today that he can do incredible things. It can make stuff expand or melt 
or boil into a gas, or change into something else, or even explode. I think I'm ready to answer the question that started my show. Why does heat cook food? The big answer is... It transforms our ingredients into something completely different. I found out that adding heat to food causes a chemical reaction. Heat breaks the ingredients down into a mixture of chemicals that feel good in your mouth and taste awesome. Ah. Unless you heat them too much, then they taste less awesome. Hey, I can put the candies inside of the cookies. Hey, Dad! It's a sunny day, I just want to play in my bare feet, in my bare feet. But oh my gosh, it stands hot, I can't stand still, it hurts a lot. It's the sun's heat, it's burning my feet. The sun has heated up the sand, and now it's more than I can stand. It's heating my feet, it's heating my feet. Guys, this is really hot. 